Hi, and welcome to Joe's Project Pit. Today's project is how to put a generator into a storage shed. Let's get started. I picked a shed that had plenty of room inside in order to maximize the airflow. I chose the Westinghouse WGen 6000 for its power and size and for its 7500 watt peak performance factor. You'll notice the insulation treatment along the entire inside of the shed. This is Everbuilt double reflective insulation. It can be stapled right into the shed support struts which line the walls, doors and roof. Other heat reflective products are available. I lined all door and roof sills with tubular insulation and added a support beam across the front to stabilize the shed since the walls tended to sway without it. Sturdier sheds cost more, so check your budget. This one cost around $290. I almost didn't want to cut holes in it, but I wanted a shed that I could close when the generator was running. This meant I had to do some research and planning. I added two 14-inch vents in the front doors mounted low so air would flow up and out of the fan system which is mounted in the side wall and includes an add-on thermostat controller. When connected to an outside outlet, it triggers the fan even when the generator is not in use during those hot summer months. On the opposite side of the shed where the generator is, I added a hole for the extended exhaust to be attached to the muffler. The extension required a base plate screwed directly into the muffler and a threaded pipe that fits to the desired length. The hole is framed out in hardy plank, which is fireproof. When not in use, the hole can be capped with any PVC pipe cap. Remove the cap and screw in the threaded pipe in the base plate when you want to use the generator. On the same side of the shed, I put a hole large enough to accommodate the 30 amp power cord that hooks up to the house when needed. This cord, plus the fan power extension cord, are snaked through the hole and both are plugged into the generator. The other end of the generator cord is plugged into the remote box mounted on the exterior of the house. This box is connected to the breakout panel inside the house that powers select circuits when the power fails. Systems like this typically cost upwards of $750 for parts and installation by a qualified electrician. Now let's power up the generator. This generator has a manual as well as electric start. Set the choke on, open the gas flow valve, turn on the circuit and press the start button. Don't forget to turn the choke off once the generator is running. The temperature inside the shed will be monitored with a remote temperature transmitter mounted near the top. With the generator running, let's test the efficiency of the shed's ventilation and fan systems. I use a simple remote temperature monitor with alarm capability so I know when the maximum trigger temperature that I have set has been reached. The connected thermostat controller will activate the fan, which will stay on as long as the temperature is above the preset level. After one hour, the temperature stabilized at about 100 degrees inside the shed. Calculating from the starting temperature, this equaled an average of one degree increase every three minutes. The most impressive observation was the decibel level outside the shed with the generator running and the doors closed. 73 decibels, which equals the sound of a food blender. All in all, I'm happy with the result from a technical aspect. Here's what this all cost me, and that doesn't include my time or the generator or the remote box and panel installation. Still, that's a heck of a lot less than getting a whole house generator system, which could cost thousands more. For now, stay safe and happy project building.